In 1972, a 17-year-old girl learned that a friend of hers had drowned not far from his house. Gary's mother owned a large farmhouse and had several acres of property she tended by herself. In one corner of the property were two large ponds that sat very close together. Oftentimes, Gary, the girl, and other friends would spend summer afternoons lounging and swimming in the ponds. One morning, while Gary was swimming at the ponds with his cousins, a freak accident occurred and Gary wound up drowning. The girl had been there at the time but was completely devastated and felt terrible for Gary's mother. A few days after the funeral, the girl was surprised to receive a phone call from Gary's mother. She hated to be in the house alone at night and asked the girl if she would be willing to spend a couple of nights in the house and keep her company. Out of respect for Gary, the girl agreed to go. Gary's mother was delighted when the girl arrived and suggested that she stay in Gary's room. The girl found this idea to be quite unnerving as everything was in the exact same place as how Gary had left it. Instead, she decided to sleep in the guest room, which was directly across the hall from Gary's bedroom. That night, the girl had a very vivid dream about Gary. It was a nightmare. She was walking along the road that led from the house to the ponds. The moon was full and bright, and as the girl walked, she could see the outline of someone approaching from the other direction. As the figure got closer, the girl realized it was Gary. She called out his name, but Gary did not respond. Instead, he kept walking with his head down, staring at the ground in front of him. As he passed her, the girl realized that she could have reached out to touch him, but intuitively knew that it was not a good idea. She watched as Gary passed her by and walked towards his mother's house. In the light of the full moon, the girl realized that Gary's hair was wet, but there was no evidence that it, it had rained. Suddenly, the girl woke up and realized that she had been dreaming and that she was at Gary's house. She turned around on the bed and realized that Gary was standing in the open doorway, smiling down at her. She realized that his hair was wet and he, he was wearing the exact same outfit she had seen him wearing in her dream. The girl sat up and smiled at her friend, but that smile quickly faded as Gary began to move towards her. That is when the girl realized that his feet were not touching the floor as he walked and that her friend was in fact dead and had been for several weeks. Terrified, the girl clutched at her blankets and threw them over her head. She waited, certain that at any moment Gary would reach out and touch her, but, at that, but that moment never came. Carefully, the girl removed the blankets and saw that the room was empty. She leaped up and bounced across the wood floor to switch on the bedroom light. A few minutes later, Gary's mother appeared in the hallway wearing her nightgown. She asked the girl what was wrong. Not wanting to tell Gary's mother that she had encountered his ghost, the girl promptly lied. Seeing the girl's pale face and frightened expression, Gary's mother suddenly burst with laughter. You saw Gary, didn't you? The woman said. I can tell by the look on your face. He won't hurt you. I see him all the time. This only made the girl more scared. Eventually, both returned to bed, but the girl slept with the light on and the blanket over her face. The following morning, when Gary's mother asked if she would spend the night again, the girl quickly refused. She spent the day with Gary's mother, but was much too frightened to sleep over ever again. Decades have passed since this terrifying incident, but every time the girl encounters scary campfire stories, she dreads hearing her own tale told back to her.